Welcome to Two Old Farts Extras. Stuff you've been missing because you're too lazy to listen or watch our show. Graphics are all messed up. <laughs> I, I just realized we didn't have Randy's face in the picture in, this, in the beginning. But I know, I know. There is one with Randy's just... face, Randy. I made one with you. It's the sweater. Oh, there, the, there's I that's the, it. That's the one with the mustache and glasses you drew. Yeah, we'll we'll put that one on for you. Don't worry about <laughs> that's that. Our name that. Was that's the three of us. There's one with the three of us in there. <laughs> Get it um, to David. He will make sure it's there. So you're going to be the new, one of the new co it's, it's, it's with all the other stuff. It's with the same okay. match. It's all he'll, in there. He'll find it. Um, <laughs> David's anyway. on mute. We like David on mute. <laughs> David, that's we, he we can't like defend him himself. I say I sent all of it, Randy. I didn't leave you out. It's in there. David, I'm, I really am not that worried about David, it. David, your mic. He's your on. Mic. He's on mute. You're on mute, pal. You're. We can't David. hear you. David, don't, okay. don't well, tell I'm him so, that. Then I'm, I'm, then I'll I'm fix just it. About to say, just about to say, ladies, that the reason why I didn't do it, I didn't have enough time in my man uh, cave to finish it all off. <laughs> no, no. So, it's, um, excuse me. It's not a man cave. It's Bob, it's, it's, it, excuse me. Yeah. It's not a man cave. It's Bob's cave. All right. It's very important. Yeah. It's well, Bob's cave. Totally honest, <laughs> I've, I've always, I, it made me laugh a bit because I was, I'd like to have a shed. I'd like to have my own shed. I think it's <laughs> You'd a, like a man cave. Yeah. Shed, but yeah. Yeah, oh my I mean, God. You know, just, I would love space, to be able to have your own bathroom and never come in mind. I want it like a man toilet. Can you just have that? You can have your own man toilet. <laughs> we we have a man toilet. It's just uh, yes, it's but, called you know, a urinal. <laughs> yes, yes, but, yes. Um, let's do that. I mean, but lady, ladies, do you do you suffer them from from the lid being put up and or, or not being put down? Because that's it's not nightmare. that so much. It's the it's the fallout. It's the shrapnel <laughs> around the toilet that bothers me. Well, you know, you know why? You know why? Because oh, men are men are just happily standing there thinking about all the lovely ladies and whistling, you know. And while you're whistling, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff doing happens the in the country. Yeah, you're just spraying exactly, all over the exactly. place like an elephant. Yeah, um, I, got I have it. to yeah. say. The bathrooms I've shared with men, luckily, they've all been considerate. If they did splatter, they wiped it off. <laughs> but um, I've never I, had oh, to... no, no, I'm glad that's on an extra. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be great. Can't wait for the fans to hear that one. That's good. I will say one <laughs> thing, though. You guys were talking about women being the weaker sex. And unfortunately, or fortunately, that's not true. There's a book I'm reading. It's called The World. Um, and it's very fascinating. It takes us back about a million years and forward. So in ancient Egypt and Asia, um, women were not weak at all. Women were warriors in Africa as well. Yeah. They were warriors, queens, and they became kings. So this women weaker sex, when I grew up being Jewish, women were never the weaker sex because, you know, what grandma said went. Um, so it was very interesting to hear all that. And also, I guess my generation, you know, the guys that were around when the dinosaurs were born, um, we don't look at feminine male. We don't look at any of that. We just look at you're a human being or you're not. And that's really it. Like, so if a woman's more assertive, good for her. And if she's not, good for her. I don't care. Don't so when guys get together, we don't really have, I we smoke I cigars care. and drink scotch. I don't know what this, I don't know what but friends you have. that older generations, yeah. um, women were perceived as the weaker sex. I'll say that. Not, it's not, not in New York, not in New York city. They weren't. Oh no, no, no. Maybe in Philadelphia. Cause it's a pussy city. I get it. A little weak. He's there. You know how it goes. Listen, we're not going to get the fights of states. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm, not say anything about, I'm not going to say anything about Philadelphia, but anyway, we'll um, but no. Philly, okay. <laughs> okay. But I, I think it's, part, I really think it's how you're brought up. And I was brought up to respect women and that women were equal to men. And that was it. And it was never, we never questioned it. And growing up and being in business and going to university and whatnot, never gave it another thought. I was, and you to were, this day, I look at women. You were like I, said, I was, I, <laughs> I was quite disturbed about the conversation. I, I, the, what disturbed me, I think, um, was were the now. struggles that all you ladies were going through, you know, because yeah. it's not that it's, maybe it's an age thing. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm not in the US. I don't know. But you know, it's it's you're talking about things that which I'm not I don't experience in my world and in the people around me. You know, I was always taught to as Steve was maybe it's an age thing I don't know to respect people. 
my mother had one rule you know you talk to other you treat people how you'd like to be treated yourself yeah. and that's the only rule you need to have and you just need to treat I don't think it's an age thing way. I just think you guys were raised by really yeah in a good environment healthy by healthy women, women. and, and it's, a, it's yeah. an individualist healthy women my mother was a, my mother was a professional housewife my father you know said you are not going to work end of you stay at home look after the kids so but you know that's an interesting point that's where maybe this whole thing could have started when women were fighting for their right to vote with mm. women were fighting for their right to go work and do do things um that's when it became a little bit like that split that um men started to kind of be like well but, but why am i not am i not providing for you am i well, not there's nothing wrong with being a stay-at-home mom and a housewife and, yeah. and having yeah. those traditional yeah. type of roles like no. you're saying if yeah. she's okay with that I'm and just, she gives I'm it a home choice, day. So, then yeah if it's is, your choice is, that's different. Yeah. Right. That's the key. I think women want to have the choice because the not choice. every woman is going to be born with these like overwhelming maternal instincts where they want to have a big litter of children. And that's, you know, I mean, some women want to do something else. And so right. if society says, no, you have to stay home and have the family, I think that's where people start mm -hmm. getting bitter and revolting right. when your choice right. is taken well, away. Yeah. But a lot yeah, of that's US, U.S. and European base, because if you look at India and you look at the Middle East, especially like Israel, you had Golden Meir in the 60s, right? Um, in India, you had female presidents. Um, and our Yeah, but in India, you can all be stoned all in for, I mean, India is a Hey, listen, other... you, take the good with, you take the good with the bad. It's just how <laughs> It's really polarized. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, even in China, they had women emperors. You know what I mean? So it's it's a U.S. pilgrim Puritan, yeah, women that, are the weaker thing. That's that. The They're not the normal, right? The everyday. Those yeah, that's are a crazy. That's a crazy thing to say, though, because if you think about, I, I don't know. I was listening to a song when I was doing my morning walk, um, which is a little bit of American country music, which I very, very it's, rarely listen. It's raining men. But lots of, no, I'm just trying to help. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> for, lots, for, lots of for lots of different reasons, but. Um, <laughs> It was it was talking about wagon wheels and all sorts of, of weird stuff, and I was thinking to myself, what sort of generation of pe uh, of women came from um, the pioneers that packed everything in, including the kids, all every pot and pan, got in a wagon, and went across the U.S. And how did you guys, you know, manage to lose your fed or the strong yeah. females when you must have only have had incredibly strong powerful women to have survived that to have you know to run a house and give birth to children where did it go wrong with you guys that's uh, uh yeah well that's, that's they were dragged probably there weren't a whole lot of women leading their own expedition to get out there so their <laughs> men decided they were going to go because they were poor and they didn't have any choice so they had to do all the work while the men got to own the yeah. land that they squatted on or got to own the the gold that they found or whatever. I mean, it wasn't like it was a bunch of women got together and be like, let's go and populate California. It was like, hey, Betty, bring no, the no, I, appreciate, you know? I appreciate so, that, but but just but yeah. just the tenacity that you need and the strength of character oh, you need, not there. only to do the journey, not only to do the journey, but to survive afterwards, you know, and yeah, to, well, to be the, the, the patriarch, the strong patriarch, which I think we were all alluding to today. Yeah, like there's um, what do people say? There's um, patriarchal society that we live in. Mm -hmm. um, well, there would be nothing wrong with that as long as it's a healthy, um, <laughs> <laughs> it, like how you guys were raised to respect women, to say that women are strong, that you need women in your lives that are. But we were raised to respect everybody. There's a difference. So I don't care. And we had a style on one of your other shows, and we've said it on other shows that we have, whether you're you're straight or gay. And I could care less about the alphabet of what everybody falls into at this point. But we were just raised that everyone's a human being until you're not. And then when you're not, right. yeah. it's a different story, right? So I don't care if you're female. I don't care if you're trans. I don't care if you're gay. I don't care. If you're nice to me, I'm nice to you. The minute right. you're not nice right. to me, that's but a that's whole different story. A That's because the children aren't raised and they're not, they're raised by an iPad and an iPhone. They don't have parents. They no. have a computer that raises That's them. That's a lot to do with it. And they watch stupid videos all day that don't teach you how to be a man or a on, woman. On YouTube. Yeah. On YouTube. That's, 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 That's how I grew up. That's how I grew up. I think, 
a lot of more the younger generation are trying to find that balance. They're Maybe. trying to find that balance more. Right. But a lot of people, I'm sorry, before iPads and internet were raised and I saw it all. Be strong. Don't be a wuss. Like, right. don't be a pussy. Um, yeah. Yeah. If your parents well, aren't up, modeling that behavior, you're screwed. Because yeah. thank goodness for like iPads I'm and like... technology now. Because now you can look at your parents and say, that's weird. I don't like that. Let me find a better way. At least that yeah. technology now is is at our fingertips and the younger generations can research different ways. Before that, you were just relegated to kind of repeating the patterns of your parents, what you but saw growing the, up. But to your to that point, when I was growing up, I actually had to have social intercourse. I actually had to talk to people and see people. Right. Yeah. Now Apple I, just came out that. with their yeah. new, now Apple just came out with their new thirty five hundred dollar AR VR headset. So now I, I don't have to talk to anybody. I can be in my own little world. I can do this. The problem is, is that when the kids come out of the womb today, they don't have to be anything other than attached to a computer or a phone or whatever. And that's a parenting thing. So to your point about toxic femininity or masculinity or good or bad or indifferent, if your role model is the internet, good luck. So, but you don't have a parent or a grandparent. Like there's no family. There's no nothing anymore. So it's not well, that you don't have a strong woman or male. That may not be such a bad like, thing, no though, Steve. That the internet is the only way you're going to get information. Because if you come from a family where communication is not yeah, available, awesome. you know, I mean, right. w my kids, we had we had a simple rule. They could right. use any word that they wanted to, any word. And uh, providing that if they were challenged about that word, that they right. knew what it meant. So you didn't know right. what it meant? Then that was put away. I mean, I've, you know, we we have had some we had some really interesting conversations, like the, one of which went back to, you know, probably not that place to talk about it, but yeah, some of my <laughs> my kids were, well, were talking about talk something. About okay, well, right, I'll but, tell you the story. But so, you had social so, so intercourse we, with your children. Yeah, so I said to my kids, you know, you're allowed to talk about everything, and that's fine because I wasn't. It was sit down, sit up, and shut up when I was at home, because my father was ex-military, so that's how it was. And I, I had like, okay, I'm very liberal. You can talk about everything. You know, and then one occasion we're sitting there, they'd been watching, I think, CSI or something, which they shouldn't have been watching, but they were. And we sat down, we're having evening meal, and my son said, uh, Dad, could you explain to me what, what anal rape is, please? Because we didn't quite <laughs> understand that. And well, then you get confronted. You get confronted yeah. with, with your own liberal attitudes. What do I do then? Do I get angry about it? You know, um, my... What my ex do? was more angry about it than I was. I said, okay, well, let's just sit and talk about it and explain it in a way that you'll understand. See, that's, but, great. that's great. You guys are parenting with that healthy. Um, yet growing up and other generations that I've spoken to, like they couldn't have actual conversations with their parents. They No, so they go, so they go to the internet. So they were yeah. getting this stuff we on YouTube, which is... We don't, so I, I lived in both internet and non-internet days. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of right in that middle. And um, yeah, before that, you know, oh, well, my parents aren't going to teach me about sex. So I'm going to go to the kid down the street who's a little bit older and see what they think about sex and learn from them. <laughs> which yeah, I know. Well, they probably, probably just watch some porno film, which, you know, yeah. degrades women or, you know, just sees them as an object and exactly. of no value other than just lust. And, and that's and that's their their norm, and they build their life and their relationships from that point onwards. True so, story. I knew somebody in college who was talking about they were graduating from high school, and they had a very like strong father figure. And <laughs> day of his graduation, his dad got him a prostitute because he said, "No son of mine is going to go to college being a virgin." Oh. Okay, so is that a good or a bad thing then? Is there a good um, or a bad thing? Are you? Uh, is it a problem oh, that, that he organized? No, no sorry. Is it a problem that, that he that he organized that, or is that a problem because the particular lady has chosen to be a sex worker? So, what's the well, issue? What's bad about it is it wasn't his choice. He didn't ask his father to get him a prostitute. He didn't say to his dad, "I don't want to be a virgin going into college." Truth was, he was not a virgin. He had sex before. He just wasn't in the secure relationship with his father or that kind of relationship where he can tell his dad or go to his dad. Like, he didn't, he didn't, I, he I didn't have to have sex with a prostitute, did he? 
He didn't want to have sex. Did he have he didn't have sex with him? He said he did not. They sat in a room. She talked to him. He talked to her. And then he came out and he told his dad, I did it. Thanks, Dad. That's okay. Nice. <laughs> and that that was like toxicity there. Because he could have taken it and like, okay, my dad is calling me a virgin wuss. Oh, I need to do this. I need to go. And then if he did start off having sex with a prostitute, then his whole relationships going forward, meeting girls in college who aren't professional <laughs> sex workers, who are new to it too, who aren't experienced, he's going to have an idea about them. of will be like, well, why aren't you doing this? How come you're not telling me this? Or, you know, it... it well, you're at such an impressionable age that your first mm -hmm. sexual experiences do kind of can kind of mold you and, yeah. and how you view sex and your preference, sexual preferences, you know, on into the rest of your life. So, yeah. Did anybody yeah. ask the father whether or not that was his first sexual experience? No, because he doesn't he, talk. He doesn't, he doesn't he talk doesn't to them. Okay. Everything's, yeah. you know, you just do this. This is how you do it. This is me. He might have. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, could, you know, it's I mean, a different once again if you don't like which happens at your house like when i was a kid you know like you went to your friend's house for sleepovers you went for dinners with them you did stuff with them kids don't do that today so they only really see four walls and then unfortunately the internet and you're talking about sex on the internet that's like the 12 and 13 year old boys are watching whatever porno because it's like are you 18 sure i am click that was easy um and you get to watch whatever so the comments and the studies they're doing with women and even girls are saying men are not men. They don't have a clue. They don't know how to take you out on a date. They don't know how to do this. They don't know how to do that. It's because there's no model, whether male or female, saying, hey, numb nuts, this is what you do. Like with my stepson, going back to your words, he has to carry a dictionary with him because he has no clue what any word means because, you know, he goes to school here in America. Um, and the other thing is, is that we teach him how to be a gentleman. So he knows how to get car doors, get stand up. Do that. He knows the whole thing, what side of the street to walk on. And if he doesn't do it, he gets the flick, you know, and, and he looks at me, I got it. I got it. So after like a year and a half, he has a clue. So I always joke with him. I said, whatever girl gets you or guy, you know, listen, no pressure. Um, they're going to be very lucky because you now are a young yeah. man. And that's yeah. important. And that's how we were. Written. And parents don't do that now. Like I see older, like 20 and 30 year olds walking like the women's on the side of the traffic. And, I, and my wife will be like, just let it go. I'm like, someone needs to go slap the shit out of this guy. And and they're just looking. She's like, just let it go. And I'm like, I don't get that. It's like no one taught them. And that's the biggest issue I have. It's like no one's sure. teaching them. And they could have Ladies, been can I just can I just ask you something? Because you touched upon it in the show about that. Like if I think it was Rachel said something and somebody had asked you and earlier on your reaction would have been, Why don't you think I can't do that myself? Well, yeah, right. that's what I'm saying. So so, like, so what happens if I go out to dinner with you, right? And and I hold the door open for you to go, you go to the restaurant. Yep. I, and I, then when you get to the table, I pull the chair for you. No. Yep. In high school, my, Does that freak I, you I, out? Boy, and we, we went on a dinner date. He opened the door for me, and I said to him, I can open my own door. <laughs> and his face was like, I've done that I'm same so stuff. Sorry. Yeah. You and know so, what, ladies? Feel... That, 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 would, that would emotionally castrate me there. Yeah, and there. yeah. So they well, been, they were he was taught to be chivalrous and, and mm -hmm. I totally yeah. couldn't <laughs> receive it. The definition of, of what that is changes in society, it changes and as you go in different societies. Like I went on a date in, in Seoul and they don't hold no one holds the door open for you. You could be 90 and with but carrying packages and no one holds the door open for you. It's just not a thing they do. They just don't, <laughs> it's not part of their manners. And so, you know, we were going through something. I just wasn't paying attention. And like the door swung and like smacked me, you know, I was like, what the, but it, I didn't get upset. I didn't, you know, say, I didn't say, why didn't you all hold the door open or I can get my own door. It just wasn't an expectation you have. And I didn't find that out till later, but you know, it's going to depend on what your frame of reference is, what time period it is. Like I, you know, I don't need to hold a man's elbow because, you know, wearing my gloves, because that's something they did 200 years ago. Like it's going to evolve. And if it comes down to, I don't want you to hold the door open for me, but I'd love it if you would go and take my car to get the, you know, spark plugs changed or something, because I don't want to do that. That's a, an act of chivalry yeah, but, that maybe is more important now than worrying about 
opening a door. Is, like that. Why can't you? Why can't you do all of that though? Why can't I get yeah, your door? I mean, open your car door or, or get your chair. Yeah, that's what I, I can still take your car. When, when, when I go out, when I go out with Annette, I don't let her carry the groceries. I carry them, even well, though I'm the ten years so. ten years older than her. I carry them. Because I do the it's same not thing. A thing. For me, it's not yeah. a thing a lady should do. And if she's Correct. carrying, if she takes a coat off and, and, and carries a coat, I'll say, it's okay, I'll take your coat. Yeah, same thing. Because I want... What because, do you allow her yeah. to do for you, though? Is she there give and so take much. Her? She, Yeah, she just... I mean, she lets, me be, she lets me be me, Vicky. She lets me be me. <laughs> well, I understand that, but I'm are talking gonna, about... Are you, starting to, are you going to sing a song? No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. So, so no, yeah, and I, I had a relationship for like thirty odd years where I found out at the end that I was wasn't allowed to. My be only there. point, Dave, is I'm just saying if it's all one sided, if it's all because you know they're seen as the weaker sex or you can't carry this, oh, it's no. not. As long as no. it doesn't come from a place as I see as a courtesy no, that, and it, no. it from you, it is because you absolutely don't think that way. But it's rooted in a in a a place where it's because you're weak, you can't do this. Not that I will do this for you because I am stronger, which is where it's coming from you, which is great. But it has to, you have to know mm -hmm. the intention. Like the girl said earlier, it, it's all depending on what your intention is and what mm -hmm. the reasoning is behind it that makes the difference. Does that make I sense? I hold the door for guys. If I'm, I, if I'm going out in a restaurant, I'll hold the door for a guy. It's not a big yeah, deal. Yeah. Like it's like, so I was just taught to you, you have to be polite. It's just polite society. There's right. this thing in um, yeah. Korea, specifically, I've seen it a lot, where the boyfriends carry the girlfriend's purses for them. Yep. And yeah. I'm like, they won't carry your bag. <laughs> I think it's because they it's just love that Jean bag and they really want it for themselves. And they're like, oh, yeah. how much is this? No, ladies, nice ladies bag. bags, ladies bags. I was taught as a child, never look in the ladies bag. Never yeah. look at even today. It for them, right? I can hold it. I can hold it, but yeah. just to peek in it. Oh, bang. Death and no. destruction in there. Don't you don't know what's in there. <laughs> That's right. Oh, it's like. And the worst is know, when like, they ask you to pull something out of it and you open no, it up and it's it. just like I the abyss. It. It's like, I, I'm like, I'm sorry, here, you can, whatever you need, yeah. you find it. It's like, because it's like a TARDIS. You open it up and there's like a universe yeah. in That's there right. and you just. Yeah. Now, out, the like question is, of course, always one. Are is that cool? to do with my masculinity then? Am well, I not masculine yes. enough to look in a lady's bag? But I'm, I'm are you feminine enough to look in a lady's that. bag? That's the question <laughs> to be asked. Of course, that am, heavy I, am I what? Sorry, Frankie. Are you are you feminine think, enough to masculinate the man by saying, "Pull my purse"? Is it a power struggle? I, I, it's just a purse, I know. But I think I you guys. I think you guys really delve. I think you read too much into a lot of stuff. I'm just saying. Well, it's like saying. it's. It's a purse. Who cares? Okay, if your girlfriend or wife says, hold my purse, hold her purse. No, if uh, and, and yeah. It's all but mutual I, stuff at the end of the day. I think people, but this generation now, and like I read a thing the other day, it said, listen, the 1% of you that get offended are offending the 99% of us that don't get offended, right? And that's what's happening is everybody's just delving every little, it's okay. Everyone's no, allowed their opinion and that's it. what I'm saying. In Korea specifically. Right. Older generation man would never hold a purse for his wife or girlfriend. Never They're more have progressive now. That's so now, why. But I'm saying, is it that <clears throat> the women started getting more like, oh, oh yeah, the, the men are starting to respect us more. I'm going to make him hold my purse. That's what it feels like. Because like, why does she, why, walking down the street, this is not that heavy. Like, they're all metrosexual. They're all metrosexual now. They're all metrosexual. World we're all living, cool. you know, when when the lights go out, we're split. We're, you know, what we're doing is, you know, sharing bodily fluids. And when the lights go on, we don't want to hold out somebody's handbag. Come on, seriously. What's exactly. the world the more, I think the more unhealed you are, and the more you have a chip on your shoulder about this stuff, the more you find right. offense in things. Right? right. It's so easy to be offended by everything. I, I was you, Rachel, like in my 20s, if somebody held a door or somebody would try to order for me at a restaurant or something, I would be so oh, don't do that. Like, no, 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 no. Are you kidding <laughs> me? Now I am tired. I have decision fatigue every day. I want to just come sit down at the table and have a man order me some food because he already knows what I like and I can just sit back mm. and sip my wine. That sounds amazing. Oh, that's, that's, that's a minefield. That, uh, anybody watching this who doesn't scared, know, don't David. order... Don't <laughs> order other women. Don't order their food. Yeah. Don't ask what they like. That you just meet. Don't order. Right. Her. Oh no no no. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, you, you can you can take a bit of a risk and order a drink. 
you know. Right. Yeah, but make the sure that if, if she wants it, if, if she wants a diet coat, she gets one and not a normal one. Oh God, the world is too small. But you know, but, <laughs> yeah, but what, whatever you do, don't order dinner. <laughs> Totally. Not on a first date. I'm talking about more of a long-term relationship yeah. where the person right. knows. Right. I'd say the hardest part yeah. is yeah. the beginning. Yeah. Once you figured out all the bumps and things, then you know. No, even in a long-term no relationship, there is you you never you order food. That's not what they I'll be like, oh, we went to the favorite restaurant. You always get the same thing. I'm like, she would like, and when I order it, she'll look at the waiter and go, no, that is not what I would like to. I'm like, okay, I'm good. And then that's it. So <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. conversation. You say he does that to keep you alive. You still want that today? <laughs> I, I I always ask, and then I'll get no, whatever you think. And then I make the order, and then I'm like, I should have thought my original decision was keep your mouth shut and just point at the menu for yourself <laughs> and get your scotch, yeah. drink a stab of cigar. Like, yeah. That's right. Yes. So, and now it's Watch easier this. when we go to dinner. I'm like, honey, whatever you want, you order for both of us. I'm good. I'll eat it. I don't care. It's, my life is so much easier. There's no stress. I don't have to get the, oh, you ordered that, did you? Because if I order the wrong thing for me, you, you're you going to eat this? Uh-huh. You're going to eat this. Uh, Yeah, it's food. How dare you? You That's not good for you. You could die from that. And I don't have the heart yeah. to tell her between the scotch cigars and my life that I lived before her, I'm going to die anyway. <laughs> However, you know, I want to enjoy my meal. Yeah. So every meal is a last meal, which is always quite numerous. So, so it is what much, it is. Not, not too much sugar in it. There's a lot of sugar in that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Then they're yeah. done. That. See, they're smiling because they know it's true, but because they just did this whole show, they're like, no, we're never like that. We're so wonderful. <laughs> so it's, we totally get it. So, but no, ladies, thank you so much. Yes. No yeah, ahead. ladies, what a fantastic show. Yeah. Honestly, it was. Really it's enjoyed. nice to have your new co-host. But yeah. next week, your new, your three. It's only going to be Rachel and who's who's on next week, Rachel. I know. I got Oscar's speech cut off again. <laughs> um, <laughs> her name is Michelle. She is part of the okay. deaf and hard of hearing community, cool. and she uh, owns a small business out here nice. in Austin. And um, yeah, I just. I thought it'd be very fun to talk to her, get her story. Because nice. I don't actually know if she lost her hearing or was born with um, a hearing loss. So right. so then next week, there won't be a oh, no. intercoursing after. And it's only going to be, I think, you next week then, right? Uh, yeah. But we can do intercoursing after. I can ask her if she's comfortable with that. Again, okay. you can hear. It's just sometimes like, you know, when we're all talking, it's, right. it's hard for her to concentrate on multiple sure. voices so, so when will your your two can your three the three musketeers will be back then in two weeks i guess yeah right okay. Angie? <laughs> I, i'd love it sure okay so yeah. david you'll okay. have to change the promo picture because if not the hostile <laughs> female toxicity or whatever we discussed today is going to come out and they're going to fly to amsterdam and you. I'm it, just it, you well know. i hope i hope they fly <laughs> to amsterdam because i don't because i don't live in amsterdam so that's fine we'll <laughs> Yes. So. Ladies, it's always a pleasure. You guys were wonderful. I hope all your fans now love the new format. Um, and this will come and we'll talk about well how we're going to do this after we say goodbye to everybody. So goodbye, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe and like to this or social intercourse. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>